guys, on today's episode, we're working on this 2011 599 GTB, and I know you like disaster cars, and I know you like supercars. So this, of course, is one and the same, just like the 458 that we did. Tons of squirrels. The clear bra itself needs to be removed and replaced. There's water spots everywhere, squirrels, and there's a bit of damage over here. Somebody must have just bumped into it, so the clear bra itself uh, is, has some damage on it. So it totally needs to be removed. Then back here, the paint, uh, which doesn't have a clear bra on, is completely squirreled out. Same thing on the white and the red. Get this thing back into shape, and then I think we might actually take it for a ride. Well, I don't know, we'll find out in a little bit. So that and a whole lot more in this episode, Drive and Protect. In 2011, Ferrari celebrated its 60th anniversary of its first ever F1 victory at the 1951 British Grand Prix in the 375 F1. To celebrate their first win 60 years earlier, Ferrari launched a special 60 years of victory in Formula One package on the 599s called the 599 GTB Firiano 60 F1, which is in the studio today. This special edition came in three different liveries. The 375 F1 livery, which is basically the historic red, the 150 Italian 2 livery, which has a little bit of white on the front lip, and the 150 Italian livery, which is the 2011 Scuderia livery. It had white on the lower bumpers, the hood, the A-pillars, the buttress, and all of this is sitting on top of the HG TE package, which basically improves the handling, and with only 40 of these ever made, it kind of makes it one of the rarest Ferraris on the road today. And oh yeah, this is daily driven, so the owner gets extra points for that. Anyhow, before we can correct the swirled out daily driven paint, we do need to remove the bra as it has some water spots and it's been damaged from another car backing over the bumper and the hood. Yes, you heard me correctly. Ironically, this is the second front engine long nose Ferrari with the exact same damage I've worked on in my career. For whatever reason, it, I guess it's super low, people back into it and they can't see it, et cetera, et cetera, but thankfully it had a clear bra on it. To do this, I used hot water as it's way more efficient than using a heat gun or a steamer. In this case, I'm using the Hamilton Beach electric tea kettles. They were about $35 on Amazon and worth every single penny. I'll put the link below. Just as a point of reference, last week I was out in Los Angeles at Matt's facility working on Mike Musto's Porsche 996, and of course it had a very old bra on it, but I didn't bring my electric pots on the plane with me, so we used a coffee pot with hot water and that works just as well. While doing this multiple times, one of the tricks I learned is to use a thick microfiber towel on the paint as you pour the hot water to keep the heat in the location longer because the towels stay hot and the water doesn't just drip off the car. So notice when I pour the hot water, it's not just running down the paint and hitting the floor. It stays warmer longer, so lifting the bra becomes a little bit easier. At the same time, I try to leave the towels under the wrap as I pull so that part of it's being lifted and staying warm at the same time as long as possible. So basically I'm pulling the clear bra and the, the towel at the same time. It seems to work pretty good. Clearly you can't use this on vertical surfaces and it's not perfect every time, but when it does work, it's really, really good and it actually pulls the glue off the paint. Full bra, yellow. When, when they turn yellow like this, that's when you know they're old. They don't really do that anymore. Gross. Now check this out, the front bra. As I pulled it off, you can see the damage that occurred inside or the top of the bra stayed in the bra as I pulled it and didn't penetrate or go through and hit the paint. There was one or two spots where it did go through. We're gonna have to touch them up later. But for the most part, the bra did its job, which is pretty cool.
Next, we clean the wheels, which are carbon ceramics, and they tend to not really give off an immense amount of brake dust. So it wasn't necessary to lift the car or remove the wheels, and the customer uh, asked us not to do either of those. The precursor to carbon ceramics was called Carbon Carbon and was originally developed in the late 70s and the early 80s for the Concorde and heavy trains because of their immense weight and high power braking needs. The 1980 Brabham F1 team was reportedly the first to ever use them in racing, but they were considered too expensive and short-lived and not really great in wet applications for regular road use. In the late 90s, the solution was to replace the carbon matrix with a non-oxidizing ceramic, which made them last longer and handle fluctuations in temperatures on daily driven cars. By 2001, the first commercially available carbon ceramics were on the Porsche GT2, and the rest, as they say, is history. Anyhow, sorry for the tangent, but to clean them, you use soap and water, which is usually all that's needed. If you feel that you need a, a bit more bite, uh, in this case, I used wheel cleaner, but I pre rinsed the wheel first, then avoid direct hits to the rotor and don't allow it to dry and you'll be totally fine. Next, we rinse the car and foam the paint before gently agitating the surface. Once the car was dry, a few bits of glue remained that we needed to hit with wrapper remover and gently lift by hand. No matter how much hot water you use, there will always be a stubborn spot left behind. Now onto the paint correction for the test spot. I used a yellow polish with the yellow wool pad and the 50-50 was spot on. So all I needed to do was focus on the larger areas and come back to the smaller areas in a little bit. For the tighter spots and around edges, I used the same process, but in this case, it was a two inch nano rotary to be on the safe side. As you can see, some of the spots in the paint were actually pretty bad because the paint was really soft. So taking the swirls and scratches out would be just as easy as originally putting them in. So protection is gonna be the key for this project when we're done. With all the scratches removed, I switched to a white polish, a five inch white pad on the Duetto with a 12 inch throw. Here's why. In most typical cases, the larger the throw, the more work is being done. But on soft paint that scratches, swirls, and hazes easily, I want to avoid the extra movement or the extra abrasion, so switching to a shorter stroke can sometimes help you avoid chasing your never-ending swirl marks at the final polishing stage. Once done with the final polish, I touched up the nose area that got hit earlier with the needle and syringe method. Now, on a side note, finding touch-up paint that matched this paint was a complete nightmare. I'm assuming because it was either so rare or it wasn't in the Ferrari system, but not exactly sure, but we got it sorted out a few days later. After the touch-up dried, we replaced the clear bra and then added Reflex Pro over the entire car. With the Pro curing on the outside, I focused on the inside. First, I vacuumed everything before pulling out the floor mats that were Alcantara. They had a few spots or stains on them that came out easily with shag, an interior brush, and a microfiber wipe down. On the dash, the Ferrari badges needed some help as they have the beginning of what looks like oxidation, but not 100% sure, as it may be related to winter storage at the beach. First, I tried ammo lather and an interior brush to see if it would just be easily removed with a microfiber towel as well. It looked much better, but by no means was it perfect. So next, I used yellow polish on a microfiber towel. When you do this, it's important to get the polish absorbed into the microfibers to avoid issues with the excess getting into the emblems and the seams and places that you can't hit, obviously, with a power washer later because it's on the inside of the car. Once you're done polishing by hand, then go back and clean it again with lather to remove the polish. Afterwards, it was much better, but there's definitely some permanent damage from whatever caused those spots to form. If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. Then I repeated the same steps on the steering wheel. If you have compressed air, make sure you use it on the Alcantara after cleaning. It gets the hairs to stand back up and look a thousand times better when you're done. Afterwards, I cleaned the smudgy gauge cluster by spraying Obey on the microfiber towel first, wiping, and then following up with the final wipe towel. 
Keep in mind that Obey can be used here on the gauge cluster and on touch screens, which are on every single car in the world today, to reduce finger smudges in the future for up to about 10 to 12 days after applying it. It's a super cool formula. Now, the dead pedal was quite dirty as well, but being Alcantara, shampooing with a traditional machine is not really a good option here. So interior brush or scrub pad is usually best, then dry with compressed air and a microfiber towel, same concept as the steering wheel. I was also asked to leave the original plastic on the floor if you were wondering why I didn't remove it. Finally, I cleaned the glass, which I don't think had been cleaned in quite some time. There's a lot of smudges. I applied mud tire dressing after I moved it into bay number two to get it ready for the flatbed pickup and delivery back to the same customer who had that 458 a few months earlier, if you remember. Well guys, we're all done with the 599 and it looks spectacular. Now with respect to the color, it is a unique sort of one-off color as I learned because you can't just call Ferrari and get a touch up made for it. You actually have to get this uh, specially done. So that took a little bit of time, but once we got that uh, and, and put it on, it looks absolutely spectacular. We had a match. There's a little bit of flake in here, kind of challenging. Once we were done with removing the, the squirrels, which I believe were caused from a uh, car wash in Manhattan, that's just speculation, but there were, this was really, really swirled out. Uh, afterwards, we put a clear bra on all the painted surfaces to kind of give him a little bit of leeway in case he goes back to a car wash, etc. There's some uh, extra protection on top of that. We put Reflex Pro, again, giving him another sort of jacket. On the wheels, we did uh, Gelee Pro. On the interior, something to keep in mind when you're using Shag or your favorite Alcantara cleaner, the goal when you're removing the dirt or the mud or whatever it is that you're trying to uh, clean, make sure that you use compressed air or a vacuum to sort of motivate those fibers to stand back up. It'll give you that impression that that it's brand new again, as opposed to being matted down, which we commonly see on steering wheels. So kind of uh, keep that in mind. It's a little bit trickier uh, with an Alcantara interior. Otherwise, it looks absolutely amazing. I love these front engine Ferraris. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. You can visit me at ammonyc.com. Like, subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys soon. Bye.